In this video, I wanna show you what I learned by watching Dominic Thames one-handed backhand. It's probably one of the biggest, if not one of the best one-handed backhands in the business. And I'm gonna show you the elements that I learned by watching this backhand and started implementing on my own backhand that you can implement on your backhand to make your backhand a better and more powerful shot. So let's get started. I have Dominic team on two different angles here because I think when you can get two different angles, you get more of a visual of what you're really looking for. And I wanna put this out there because I think it's really important. When we watch videos and strokes like this, you're gonna see what I'm looking for is these big major things to show up most of the time because you're not going to get the exact same stroke every time depending on the situation of the ball so I tend to choose strokes just like this where they're in a position that they can execute their stroke without too much pressure you're gonna see how Dominic team is already in a unit turn and what I look for here is you notice how when you look at his shoulders if I drew a line through his shoulders they're going across here but then he turns and this is really important and for a long time, I think I misunderstood this unit turn so much. It is to coil your body, but it's also to get you set and to get more distance away from the ball, meaning that he's using that racket out there to try to measure the spacing with his um, with the oncoming ball. He's not necessarily coiling yet, because if you look at his shoulders and his hips, they haven't done anything different. Basically, he's just turned to prepare. Another really important thing that I, I didn't take in enough is how much he just runs in this position before he starts his swing. And it's really important, and I'll mention this as we get deeper into analysis to see or to show you why this is so important. The next part is what I like to say, when he's gonna start his swing, he starts to cross the line. And what I mean by that, right here, if I draw a line right through Dominic team, his shoulder, like you draw a line right here, his, this right shoulder crosses the line. And this is the start of his coil. This is the start of him starting to store energy. Now, another big element is that uh, generally he uses his weight on his back foot and transfers that forward. But he's not going to be able to do that in every shot, and especially when he's trying to run back. He'll still load that leg, but he won't be able to shift that weight as forward as he would like. And so you can see the same thing here. As he starts moving forward, boom, the shoulder just crosses the line here and you can see that represented by where his shoulder is right here you can see his shoulders tucked in under his chin and this is hugely important because now he's starting to coil his body and this is a major element to start having a bigger and better one-handed back end so many players don't coil enough and this is what provides a lot of the uh, the racketed speed for your one-handed backhand. The next position you're gonna see Dominic team is what I call push to pocket. And what he's gonna do is use his non-dominant left hand to take the racket back, but also take the racket down and push it near his pocket. And you can see it here. If you look at his non-dominant arm right there, or his hand, it's gonna take the racket back, and now it's gonna push it down right near his pocket here. You'll see the same thing here with the non-dominant hand. Take it down and he gets his hand right next to his pocket. And when he uses his non-dominant left hand to pull the racket down, it adds to more shoulder internal rotation. He's storing energy there by stretching it that he can release when he starts going forward. Once Dominix has pulled his racket to the pocket, that's kind of the locked and loaded position where he's gonna start firing his hips. In both images, I want you to watch his hip. And the reason why this is important is because when he rotates his hip, since he's already coiled up, it's going to rotate his shoulder. And that's going to be the driving force that he's going to use to send the racket forward. And then he's going to do some external rotation, which is going to accelerate the racket even more. And so when we look at it here, I want you to watch the hip. And the very first move, you can see how the hip's rotating open. And it's a little tougher because he's also on the run here. So there's not gonna be that much hip rotation. If you look, you can see right here on the edge, we can't really see or barely see the edge of his shorts. And it starts to come around because he's using that to fire off. Same thing here, you're gonna see some rotation on this leg where here he's pushing off and you can see that pocket move. If we blow this up here and you're looking right at his pocket, you're gonna see a subtle move where the shorts come forward. And that's what he's setting that energy up, which also puts him in a position to pull that racket forward. Now, the connecting factor that I think that when he's pulling his racket forward using his hips is what I call he uses his armpit sandwich. <laughs> Sounds weird. But you'll notice right before he swing, right in here, there's no room right here. Same thing. You can't really see it from this angle, but you can see that this very tight. The reason why that's important is because when he rotates now, his arm is being rotated from his shoulder and his shoulder is being rotated from the hips rotating and then the arm will come off. It's like a slingshot sending everything forward. From here, you're gonna see him start to extend through the ball. 
His arm is completely straight, and you're going to see this frame where he extends through the ball for a couple frames, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, before he starts coming off the ball and do doing his follow through. You'll see the same thing here. He's made contact, and you can see how deep he extends. Now, I want to go back and wrap this all up, meaning that I want to talk about his swing and talk about a really easy method that I'm going to show you in a second about a swing. Uh, so make sure you watch the drill portion that I'll, I'll show you what that means. But you can relate his swing to his thumb position, meaning that when if I have my thumb up right now, the racket would be up. Thumb down or thumb even or neutral, the racket would be even or neutral and thumb down. And so if we go back and look through his swing right here, if he were to put his thumb up right here, this would represent his racket being up, his thumb being neutral right here, and then pulling to the thumb being neutral again and around. And so I'm gonna show you how you can relate this to your swing so you know exactly where to put your rack and how to have your rack in the right spot and how to generate smooth power by sandwiching it all together in the drill portion. So let's go to the court. The very first drill is we wanna start thinking about how we need to cross the line. You have that imaginary line that we talked about and most players when they take the racket back, they're probably about here and they wind up doing this. So a great drill is just standing on the line just like I'm doing now, so you can use this as a reference. I'm gonna turn my body sideways so my front toe is on the line right now. And so right now, if you can hopefully see the line here running through my body, my shoulder's on the line. And what I wanna do is cross line, okay? So we're just gonna practice crossing the line and looking over the shoulder, crossing the line a couple times. From here, I'm gonna stand facing on the line and then I'm gonna take a step and cross the line. This is a really important move that you see Dominic team do, is that he's getting ready and then he crosses the line to start coiling up. Now a couple keys to crossing the line that really helps him is that left hand. That left hand really, once he gets into his grip, helps him pull the racket back so his shoulder can cross that line. And it sets the stage for everything else. So make sure you practice this a ton because if this breaks down, everything else breaks down with it. The second drill is called push the pocket. So since we just now crossed the line, we're gonna take our left hand that's helped us pull the racket back and now use that hand to push the racket down to the pocket. What this is really doing is creating internal shoulder rotation that we can use later. Internal shoulder rotation. So we're gonna go cross the line, push the pocket. Practice these drills at home or on the court where you're just going cross the line, push the pocket. And when you do it, in the beginning, it's okay to kind of separate out. So you're going cross the line, push the pocket, but as we put everything together, we wanna to make it pretty seamless. But now that we set the stage with crossing line and pushing the pocket, we need to rev the engine. And that engine is our hip. We notice how Dominic's shoulders on this side, but what happens when he wants to swing, he starts firing that hip. And the way he fires that hip is he starts to turn this knee, this looking towards the camera now, in towards the court. Just now, as I turn my knee into the court, it's moving my hips, which moves my shoulders. So what I want you to do is, as you get into this push the pocket position, Make sure your front toe is slightly open, and all I want you to do is practice turning that knee in a little bit, turning that knee in a little bit. Now here's one thing, you don't need the knee to turn all the way in. We just need it to initiate, because what's happening here when I start turning my knee in, it starts pulling the racket to contact, it starts pulling the racket to contact. Also, one important thing is we want to have this like sandwich effect between our armpit and our arm. So right here, there's no space. There's not here, it's here. Because now, since I have this tension right here, all I want to do is use my hip to pull the racket towards contact. So practice now, pulling the racket towards contact and leaving your hand at your pocket. So pull, leave the hand towards the pocket. Pull, leave the hand towards the pocket. It's really important that you combine the hip pulling and leaving the hand towards the pocket. This hand will anchor you and prevent you later on from opening up because it'll anchor your hand here, making sure that your shoulders don't open up too much too soon. The third drill is a swing drill. And a really easy way to understand a swing is just watching the thumb, or my thumb here, because it represents the racket. When we watch Team's racket, his racket's up, and then it goes slightly below the ball, and he pulls it even through the ball, and it goes back up. I almost think of this like the old school game Mortal Kombat, where it's like, finish him! He goes from positive to negative, and we're bringing it back up. But how we would do this here, is if I have my thumb here, I'm going down, I'm pushing it where my thumb is facing slightly down, I'm pushing my thumb through contact or pulling my thumb through contact i'm all the way extending and then it comes up the big mistake that a lot of players make is their thumb is kind of windshield wiping through contact we want the contact to be solid so go ahead and practice going here here 
here. This seems very weird, but thumbs up. We're on, we're not gonna quite finish him, but we're, we're not thinking highly of him. We're even, he's neutral, and then up. And then if you think about it, I can even have my thumb up to represent the exact same thing, going here, push down, my thumb is matching my racket face, here through contact, extending through and out. Now obviously I wouldn't want my thumb behind my racket, but it's a great drill to make sure you're doing the exact right move with your racket coming through. Once you've got the knack of this, you take your thumb and you just tuck it slightly under. And so you get this effect of going down, push the pocket, extend the thumb through and around. And now you can combine everything together. First staging it where I'm going across the line, push the pocket, turn the hip, extend the thumb, and around. And now you can start doing drop feeds for yourself where you toss it up, you focus on crossing the line, and boom. I'm doing the exact same thing, crossing the line, and boom. Now, one thing that'll put everything together, it's like the, the lighter fluid that can really light everything on fire, is that one thing the Dominic team does is he keeps a very fluid swing. He works in making sure that gravity assists on gluing all these things together so his acceleration is massive. So what you wanna do is start thinking, Continuous swing, continuous swing. And you can see how I'm really driving through the ball with no problem because I'm staying with it and going through the ball. If you do these drills, if you practice these drills and then take it to the court where you can start drop feeding and hitting through, you'll start seeing better results on your one-handed back end. And if you wanna know more drills you can do at home, make sure you go watch this video.